What up? This is Rama Screen, and in the anticipation of Queen of Spades arriving in select theaters June 11 and on demand June 15 and on Blu ray June 29, I'm here talking with the director of this new film, Patrick White. How are you, Patrick? I'm great, Rama. Thanks for having me. Thank you for taking the time and congratulations on the film. Let me start with the obvious question How did you get on board this project? What was it about the script that made you say, Yes, I want to direct this one? Okay, so. It starts with um, Level Film, the Canadian distributor, had the rights to the original Queen of Spades, The Dark Right. And I had just made a short film called The Garage that had played, you know, Palm Springs International Short Film Fest, Atlantic Film Fest. It had been on, it played Calgary Underground. Um, and after they saw that, they kind of said, listen, we think you might be good for doing this project, uh, Queen of Spades. Do you want to take a look at it? And so we watched my my producer partner Brendan McNeil and I watched it, and it's a it was a roller coaster. It just you know, it just started and it just went. I thought it was a lot of fun. And the biggest piece for me that really wanted me to make to do it was, I grew up with um, Bloody Mary, and then obviously Candyman came out. Um, and to think that this mythology, and you know, if you do research on Queen of Spades. It's the same mythology, just done in a in a completely different culture, and so I I thought it was fascinating. All the same ingredients, standing in front of a mirror, conjuring up a, a demon, you know, having the quiet, all the other pieces. And I thought I thought actually the Russians do it better because you actually do something active on the mirror. You actually draw, you know, the door and you ask uh, ask the queen to come visit. So that that was the biggest piece for me was. How could we take this and bring it into North America? And I think, you know, a lot of people, you know, that are coming you know, on the trailer or whatever, I don't think they actually realize that this is a real mythology that the Russian uh, people have. Uh, and it's, they might not know Bloody Mary, but they know who Queen of Spades is. Let me get straight to the million dollar question here, because the whole time I was watching this film, and even now I'm super duper curious uh, about how you transform actress Krista Martian into the Queen of Spades. <laughs> Talk to me about the uh, the design, the, the outfit, the look for the Queen of Spades. How many concepts did you go through before you decided on what you wanted to see on the screen? So I, I was very fortunate because um, it had been quite a long time since I had worked on a feature. Um, and I had done, I had produced a movie called Jack Brooks Monster Slayer. And I worked with the uh, special effects um, a uh, company called Foreman Dynamics run by a guy named David Scott. So I, when I was going to do Queen of Spades, there was, I just went back to the people that I worked well with and I contacted David and said, you know, read the script, let's have the conversation. And so we just started having the conversation. We, you know, we, we had the inspiration from the original, the Russian, um, and then it was just a matter of starting, starting to talk, what would the queen look like? What were we going to focus on? I would say, you know, and the Russian looked like they had a lot more CG. Um, we went with a lot more practical. We really tried to go practical. And it was a matter of, okay, what's the story of the queen? She usually drowns people. So can we give her some kind of look that that grayness, because like she's been underwater almost, you know, having those kind of pieces done to her, um, the slits, the decay. So that was really it. And I think the the big piece that I really tried to drive on this whole project was collaboration. So I really let David kind of define that and say, and, and the stuff he started showing me, I don't think there was really much change. And then, and then I would say the other piece of it was talking with Chelsea, um, our, our costume designer, and then how do we really shape the look of her from the wardrobe and that dress and creating the crown and creating, because a lot of a lot of the movie we also try to play with her in shadow mm -hmm. um so it was i think that that's that's really where it came from obviously there are no animals harmed during the making of this film <laughs> <laughs> but there are two adorable animals a bird and a cat playing supporting roles i know i've heard stories uh, about how working with animals was a joy on the film set, but I've also heard stories about how working with animals was a nightmare on the set. Which one was it for you? And did those cat and bird have uh, come with their doubles or is just them? Uh, so th it was just them. I would say the bird who, whose real name is Mello, which actually our director of photography brought home, uh, had a double because the dead bird 
was uh, essentially a dead stuffed, um, I think, toy for a cat. Um, <laughs> so, and I think, you know, the, the, the biggest trick with the bird was the bird, you know, pretty much reacted on site, you know, would, would move around. You could kind of get it to, to fly around. That wasn't a problem. Um, but it got out of its cage at one point. <gasps> And so when it got out of its cage and, and where our craft service was, and it, like, it was a matter of like, I was on set and I came into the room and I like, everybody kind of stopped and they told me, oh, the, the bird Mello is out of his cage and they were trying to tra trap him. And that was where it was like, I just left because it was like, I wasn't going to be able to catch the bird. <laughs> and if we didn't get the bird, that was going to be a major problem. But we ended up catching the bird. And then the cat, you know, I think, and the cat again, it was, you know, we were, we were extremely low budget. We put out Facebook ads, we reached out to people who, and we got a great, um, a great family uh, in the Quebec area, just on the other side of the border here in Ottawa, that offered up their cat and they were fantastic. And I would say the, the key for us, we brought the cat on set one day when we had like the whole crew there mm -hmm. and the cat was definitely intimidated out of its element. It wasn't going that well. <laughs> and then me and the DP said, all right, what we'll do is we'll come in on the weekend. It'll just be him and I and the cat. So the times you see the cat going down the hallway or the cat underneath the, uh, the on top of the bed or uh, in the, under the, the table, mm -hmm. that was all shot independently. And that was it. Like, how could we introduce the cat into scenes that made sense. You saw the, and I think that's the difference between a cat and a dog. A dog is always around somebody else. Cats are usually off doing stuff. Um, and then trying to get the hiss out of the cat was also, was also tricky. So <laughs> I think, I think we shot for four hours. Like we have four hours of cat footage. I, we, we probably could make more money just putting the cat video <laughs> online. So I, I'm sure you can. I'm sure it'll, yeah. it would have gone viral. And I would I would have loved to see uh, some kind of a behind the scenes footage of uh, of that bird <laughs> and that cat <laughs> maybe on the Blu-ray or something. <laughs> yeah, Ava is a very talented young actress. At her age, for her to be carrying this movie as the lead and did a fantastic job at it, it's very impressive. In your conversation with Ava, how did you direct her to get the most per to get the most out of her performance as the character Anna? Um, again, coming back to collaboration, like I, I was very, very fortunate and I would say our whole cast, especially our keys were, were exceptional. And I would say, you know, with, with Ava, the, the beautiful thing was she had quite a bit of time on set, right? She's already done quite a bit. She had already done a horror movie. She, you know, she, she was really, um, a professional, her family, kind of, you know, her grandparents were were actors, so she knows the industry. And it was a matter of, you know, just really letting her have the space to drive it. I know we had a couple conversations early on before we started filming and it was, you know, we, she was just such a joy because she came in without any ego, without any, you know, she just wanted to, to please and make the best role possible. And it was just really collaborative. I would say there, you know, the times I needed to tweak a performance or, or kind of give comments was very minimal. It was really a lot of her just driving and, and just setting her up for su to succeed. So giving her the space to perform and having as many takes and then possibly just playing around with changing it up at points. But it was, she's a very talented, talented individual that I see a lot of potential for. And finally, uh, what's next on your horizon, Patrick? And will it, will it be Queen of Spades two? Well, let's let's see what the reaction <laughs> is to Queen of Spades one. Um, so uh, I I did a short film uh, back in probably two thousand and five called Still Life that did quite well. It played it won at Claremont Ferrand. It played I think forty festivals around the world. It, it did extremely well. And the writer of that is a good friend of mine named Charles Johnston who's actually one of the executive producers on Queen of Spades. And I'd written a short film called Sleepwalking um, that when he came, he came up to do the, we did a drive-in theater kind of cast and crew screening um, during COVID because it was the only way for people to see it. Um, and we talked about that movie and it's, it's very much a, a thriller. Um, mm. if you know, the movie Cache or, you know, Blue Velvet along those lines. Um, mm. 
it has definite horror elements and it's really about someone investigating themselves because they can't trust themselves what they're doing when they're sleeping all right looking forward to it for my fans at home everybody go check out queen of spades arriving in select theaters june 11 and on demand june 15 and on blu-ray june 29 patrick thank you for talking to me and congratulations thanks roma